Okay, orange. Right, so, a few little changes. So over here, that's the same, that's the same, that's the same. Right, but on a bigger core, and that might give a different context. Here, this involves using a lot of angles. Right, and that might involve using a lot of open racket face work or slightly faster racket head. And this involves keeping the ball deep. So my directionals build like that. Yeah, so now those things come into play as well. The same things are there. They change because we go on a bigger court, but also we have those things. If we move across, this has gone a little bit wider. So instead of being nicely here, sometimes I'm going over there. Yeah, it's gone a little bit higher sometimes. And also, because the court's so much bigger, I get into balls a little bit later. So it's going to be a little bit lower as well. Is that right? So you get the... Yeah, so that's for, that's for the serve, and if you just flip back to red, okay, look at the height above the, now flip to orange, but this is bigger, yeah, bigger and a little bit higher, so because I'm, because I have a bigger foundation, wider, stronger, I can go up a little bit higher to hit, yeah, all right, here, this has gone a little bit wider, and also this has gone forwards, because I have to be able to move forwards. Yeah, don't forget, we're going to go through those. So if you're going, well, well, yeah, hold on. All right. Just want you to understand it. And down here, this is the same. And now we have the clock, which has become bigger. Now what the clock is, there's just two elements of time. One is to take time away from our opponent and build, get time. And it's hitting faster, sometimes hitting slower. But the other dimension of time is now and next. So when you're nine, 10 years old, you can think about shots in patterns a lot more. So we should be practicing, we should never be practicing like volley, 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 volley. We should be practicing approach volley. Yeah, you see that? So we should always be trying to connect things together because the kid is now capable of connecting it. So if, for example, if I'm a red kid and my opponent's over there, I hit the ball over there. My opponent runs over there and hits the ball. When he hits it back, I see there's a space over there. That's now. I'm thinking now. But if I'm an orange kid, I might go cross court, cross court, cross court, cross court, cross court, to push it, push it, push it, push it, push it, looking for the short ball. Okay, down the line. And that's what we mean by connecting shots together. There's more of an intention. And that's based on the cognitive development of a kid. A kid is basically now um, able to think ahead. If you like, if if you think about playing a game of pool, they can pop the ball, but they know where they're trying to get the cue ball to go to pop the next one. Whereas if you're rubbish at a pool like me, you're a red player. If you pop the ball and you pray, that it's going to go in the right place to pop the next one. All right? So that's the level there. And then the, this little one here, the start that's grayed in, is I'm starting to think about my opponent, who they are, how I play them, how I beat them. Now, every single one of these cognitive development levels is the same in most computer games. Right? And the kids can achieve these things in computer games. They can work out puzzles that, by connecting various things together. Yeah, and then they can work out how you beat different creatures, for example, in different games. So don't think it's not difficult. They can actually do it. They're just doing it in other bits. And we could do a whole two days on We've done whole presentations on how you steal everything that computer games do and implement them in your tennis lessons. Because 91% of all Americans between the age of two and 17 were gamers in 2012.